memoir has got to be probably the hardest genre to write for, in my opinion, because there's so much balance that has to happen between you and your story and the author and what people are going to think and the structure and the narrative. So I thought I would talk about four things that happen when you write a memoir. The first one that's probably the most prominent, at least for me, is that you are going to get uncomfortable with people reading your book, depending on the kind of story that you're telling. Even though my book is about working in Yellowstone, what that was like, it's very coming of age. There are parts where I'm just like, I think of like my grandmother or like my coworkers reading that and I'm like, ooh, like, ugh, you could just kind of skip past that part. But I think what I would have to say about that is continue to tell the truth even if it makes you uncomfortable because the point of a story is to benefit someone else. Telling a truth only makes you look more human, in my opinion. Now, this might also lead into the question of like, how deep am I supposed to go? Which, which is a very appropriate question to ask. Like if I'm telling a memoir, talking about my side of things, my experience, you know, to help someone else who might be in a similar position or to educate or to inspire or whatever, how deep should I go with these stories? And I would say that it depends on one, is there a point to the story that you're, that you're, that you're telling? Like if you tell a story without a takeaway from that story, it's just a tangent. It's just a diary entry. It might even be whining to just put it really simply. You might risk talking in vignettes, which is like singular little spots, almost kind of like bubble thoughts that that happen to be stories. You don't want that. So think about what is the point that you're making with this particular scene or with this particular story or with this particular interaction? What is it that you're wanting to communicate? And think about, you know, your ideal person you would want to read this. Where are they at? What, what position in life are they in? And do you think a story like that would benefit them? Number two is that I, this has not happened to me personally that I'm aware of, but number two is that you might get backlash from some people who felt like the story was not told the right way or they feel like you missed out on certain parts of it. Um, like that's not how it happened kind of thing. And my immediate response to that kind of thing would be like, if you want to tell your side of things and get the story right, you are more than welcome to write your own book. If you want to go through the process of outlining, writing, editing, pitching, publishing, and marketing your book, by all means, go for it. But um, this is me, my story. It took a crap ton of work to do, and this is how I, ha how I have to say. This is how I interpreted a very particular time in my life. I think that's a very appropriate response, in my opinion. If anyone wants to get it right and write their own story, grab a sheet of paper and a pen, have at it. But I would also say that the point of a memoir is to talk about how you personally interpreted and responded to a particular set of circumstances. And as I was sort of like thinking about this video and scripting it and writing down all my notes and stuff, I was thinking about how everyone's circumstances or the packaging for the story is going to look very, very different for every person. That is part of the unique selling point. I'm doing a lot of air quotes, I feel like. <laughs> it's really, really important to think, to ask the question, of what's so special about this. There are a million people out there with a story to tell. What is the unique angle with mine? And that's usually where the particular set of circumstances come in. In my case, it was working in Yellowstone National Park as a young adult female. You don't really hear about that kind of perspective or that kind of angle really at all, apart from maybe like Cheryl Strayed's Wild. Another example might be Tara Westover's Educated, which is a really, it's, it's probably one of my favorite books, but her angle was, you know, I grew up in a Mormon survi survivalist family who didn't believe in public education. I got myself into college, didn't know a thing about World War II or the Holocaust or MLK or any of these major events, and she ended up graduating with a PhD from Cambridge. That is an incredibly unique selling point. And unique selling point sounds so like businessy and like corporate-y, but that is kind of a way that you have to think about it. Every memoir is worth telling, but what's, what's gonna make it unique to get people to read it or invest in it if they're an agent or a publisher. The other thing too that I would just tack on to this is that if there's someone that you are portraying in a bad light, change the details. And what I mean by that is some, if, if someone knows that they are that character that you're portraying in a bad light, it doesn't hurt to offer a little layer of protection by maybe like changing their hair color, their accent, their demographic, where they come from, some of their mannerisms, tweak some of the details so it's not so obvious. They can't say, oh, how can you not tell me that's not me? Like they have my hair, they're same demographic, you know, same background, so da 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 da, whatever. I would, I would just say tweak some of the details just so you can be like, well, no, not exactly. This person is da 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 da, and you can just kind of 
you know, it's just a little, a little extra anonymity. And the other thing too, that sort of goes with that, that I would say is if someone doesn't like how they're portrayed in a memoir or in your book, frankly, I think they should have behaved better if they wanted to be written about in a better light. Memoirs are very personal stories. And this is how people remember other people. Your behavior impacted me in some way, whether you remember it or not. I have to talk about it because it's going to be benefit someone else or it's going to keep the story moving forward or there's a particular point that I'm making with this person or I'm, or I'm trying to dem demonstrate something. Like I would just say to add in a little bit of extra anonymity and just kind of keep that boundary with yourself and others. Write your own book if you're not happy with it. Behave better if you don't like how you were written about. Number three, you're going to get a little frustrated at readers' reviews. And I'm not saying that I would change anything about what people have written, but I would say use uh, discretion. <laughs> also set some boundaries with yourself. If you decide to hop on Amazon or hop on Goodreads and see what people have to say about your book, I think it's a little bit different when we're talking about like trade reviews where, you know, publications or businesses or whatever, like re read your book and leave professional reviews. I think that's a little bit different because there is that layer of professionalism to it. But real people are going to have real thoughts. They're going to keep it raw. They might keep it light. I really don't know. I would say feel free to read them if you have thick skin, but especially when it comes to memoir, keep in mind that people are not going to agree with or like the way that you responded to a particular person or a situation. And in that case, I think just personally, I think, you know, well, <laughs> That's how it happened. Like, this isn't a work of fiction. I can't just like go back and redo what I did. I'm sure if I traveled back in time and met my 20 year old self in a very particular situation, I would also get annoyed at how I responded to it. But maybe this is just you not being the ideal audience. If, if someone doesn't like your book or doesn't like how you reacted to a particular event or challenge or something, it very well just may be that they're not your ideal reader. So I would just say to take it and move on. And <laughs> lastly, number four, I'm calling this woulda, coulda, shoulda syndrome. <laughs> and this has to do with maybe having some minor regrets about writing the book in general, about writing about certain pieces, about writing about particular people for better or for worse. You know, you might have some thoughts like, oh, in retrospect, should I have written about that? Should I have written about it in that way? And I would say that it's okay. Do I personally regret writing my book? No. But because every memoir is going to have a lot of vulnerable pieces in it, whether it's through a series of events, through a person, through personal interpretation of the events or the challenges that you've gone through, I would just say that, you know, there you might kind of feel a little like, ooh, yeah, okay, so there's like people reading this. Wow, that's something. <laughs> my, my two points to uh, address this thinking in retrospect is to have someone to tell the story to. If you're afraid that you're going to go off on a series of tangents, if you're afraid that the way that you speak about something isn't going to come off the right way, like as early on in the book writing process as you can, ideally before you write the book, if you're in the middle of writing a book, it's okay. Just start where you're at. Pick out one person. Like it could be your ideal reader. It could be someone you know, but just pick one person that you would feel really comfortable telling the story to. And that might not only inform your language and your voice, but that also might help inform, you know, the way that you describe someone or the way that you talk about something. And I would also say to research comp titles, and this is a, if you haven't heard of this, it's a very common term in the book biz, and it stands for either competitive titles or comparable titles. I've heard them used both ways. I personally prefer to think of them as comparable because I don't think this needs to be a competition. Like we're all here to write a good story, you know? But this is essentially where you are researching books that are similar to yours in content, in audience, in style, in delivery, maybe all of the above. And just kind of get a feel for what people have to say about their story. Not necessarily their story, but maybe the delivery of the story, like how it was written about, what people got out of it, what people did or didn't like about it. Maybe, you know, if you can poke around the first few pages of the book or something like on Amazon or through your library, like get a feel for maybe how they wrote about something. If it's kind of similar to the story that you're going for or that you're wanting to write about and use that kind of like as a guide or like I always thought of them as like mentor texts. I used um, Cheryl Strayed's Wild and Elizabeth Gilbert's Eat, Pray, Love to inform mine. I used bestsellers, which is generally frowned upon only because I didn't know of many other books similar to mine that were published through small presses by like lesser known authors. So those are the two guides that I had. It was available to me. They were cl the closest hybrid match to the story I was going for. So that's what I did. I, I looked at how they structured it. I, 
you know, looked at how they talked about certain pieces. I looked at the reviews. I read both of the books myself and enjoyed them. So I would just say to kind of keep those two things in mind. Pick out someone to write the story to, to kind of help with some of that a little bit, and then research comm titles so that you can write in an in, in informed and even empowered way. So that's really all I got. Um, I just, you know, this is meant to be a little bit shorter, a little bit sweeter, but I did want to put out a few fun facts. Well, I don't even know if they're fun facts, but just some four new fresh perspectives, I guess, on memoir writing from a best-selling memoirist. So um, if you got something out of this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. By doing that, you are helping to tell the algorithm and other folks that, hey, this video is really cool. This person's really awesome. I got a lot out of it. Help to spread the message a little bit and get other people empowered to write, craft, edit, market, publish, etc. their own books. That's really what I'm here to do is just help people to get creative and write their books and stories. So that's all I got. <laughs> uh, have a good one. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.